It is smelling extremely pongy in here. Look at the balloon. Ah! If this works, we're gonna dunk it in gravy at the end, and that's why it must work. everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to a very damp, rainy, miserable, gloomy England. Uh, yes, it's, it's a horrible day today. The light is horrible as well, and hopefully I'm gonna bring a little bit of festive cheer through the power of a JPEG or Pixel uh, on your watching device of choice. That's my aim. Also, we're gonna try and make this. Yes, this, can you see that? Can you see that? <laughs> This is my diagram of, um, no it's not a germ, this is a festive Christmas Wellington. We've made a beef Wellington on the channel, we've made a chocolate Wellington, oh it's blooming stonking. But I had this idea of bringing together all my favourite Christmas things into a Wellington and this, I have to be completely honest, could fail. But if it fails, you can do it and yours will be even better than mine. So we're gonna have pigs and blankets right in the middle, sausage wrapped in bacon. That is not the American pigs and blankets. Look, I'm very neutral about things. Spoiler alert, I generally have to be. But Americans, I love you guys. Pigs and blankets in the UK, I know we're different to the US ones. So much better. This Christmas, say, we're making some British pigs and blankets. Just do it for me and you'll love it. So that's what's going in the core. Bacon wrapped sausage. Mwah. We're gonna wrap that in Brussels sprouts. Blech. Love them. Cranberry as well. Cranberry sauce to give it some sweetness. Ooh. Then we're gonna get some turkey. So that's gonna be our beef. We're gonna try and flatten that and make a turkey carpet. And then what am I doing? What the heck is that? Oh, stuffing. Yes, I've done my arrow wrong. Yes, stuffing. Oh. Uh, and then pastry, which we bake and hold it together, hopefully into some sort of tubular vessel of Christmas festivity in a pipe of pastry. I don't feel gloomy anymore, do you? Cheers. I've already made my stuffing. Patreon Vlog Club just had the exciting moment where I actually made this before we got started. Okay, so this is some stuffing. Uh, obviously, you would normally bake this. You can make it homemade with breadcrumbs. I thought I'd just get one of those packet mixes with sage and generally sage and breadcrumbs. I think that's literally what it is. It does look a little bit ill, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, the one thing I've got to say, which I didn't add on my germy diagram, if this works, we're gonna dunk it in gravy at the end and that's why it must work. Normally you would boil sprouts, so you can shove them in the oven, you can do so many different things, you pan roast them with bacon. Oh my god, that's what we do every year, to be honest. But apparently, by cooking them in the microwave sealed, that can also cook them. So I thought I'd try that today. Absolutely no reason why, just wanted to be a bit different. And if you look closely just before it's done, uh, it's puffed up the cling film like a massive balloon. Uh, it is smelling extremely pongy in here, so boiling it might be a little bit safer. Boom, look at that timing. Look at the balloon. <laughs> Amazing, it's gonna deflate a little bit. Bye bye balloon, bye bye. All right, so pigs and blankets, sausages uh, that are wrapped in bacon. Uh, so just to be absolutely certain, because the sausage is gonna be right in the middle and I've gone for like some classic, fairly larger sausages, I've pierced them uh, with a fork. Yeah, because sausages, look, it's only been a couple of minutes, they're letting out a lot of oil and I want that out now before, it, I mean, this is my thinking, it could be completely wrong. <laughs> I want it out now so that it doesn't swish around inside the Wellington and ruin the rest of it. You see? Yeah, look at all that. I don't want that in there. No, no, no. I have to be completely honest with you. The sausage is what I was most worried about, getting that heat right into the middle. The bacon wrap around it is kind of thin and would probably cook anyway, but on a beef Wellington, you normally wrap it in some sort of ham, which is of course edible. So what I'm doing as a sort of compromise is I'm partially cooking some bacon rashers, just so that they, they change color and they, you know, they, they're kind of just on the borderline of being cooked. Again, getting some of that fat out, but also for that peace of mind of knowing that it's one extra bit of meat that, is gonna be cooked, you know? <laughs> Just to the point where I can wrap it still, it's not gonna be firmed up, but it gives me that peace of mind. In other news, the Brussels sprouts, look how I've left it. <laughs> that cling film is kind of shrink-wrapped. The sprouts, it's amazing. Oh, that smell. <laughs> oh yeah, that reminds me of grandpa at Christmas. But ultimately, oh, that's work to charm. All right, this is uh, some turkey breast steaks. I've got about 10 here that I've just slightly laid on top of each other. Because what we're gonna do is encase it, all right? And I'm actually gonna tap it down. Okay. 
I think I just couldn't enjoy that too much. So I don't even know if this is gonna to join together like that. I, this is chicken breast, it does. I've never done turkey before, so this is all new to me. We're effectively trying to create a log, so we have to work from the outside in, apart from the pastry, okay? Uh, so the outside layer is the stuffing. So now we've got a rough idea of what the turkey's gonna be, we can do that. I really hope this works. Anyhow, the cling film remains the key thing here because that's ultimately what's gonna help us roll it all up. Okay, so I've just dolloped down all of my stuffing. It's like, what am I doing here? I'm gonna make a nice thin layer of stuffing all the way along here. All right, little tip. If you use a wet spoon, it is amazing. Look at that. It's like I'm screed in a floor. So the plan is to try and lip, no, that ain't gonna work. I know, well, no, I'll just do this. I've already flattened it and got it level. It can join again together anyway. Oh yeah, there we go. See? Yeah, I'm gonna have, yeah, there we go. That's fine. Oh my gosh, excited. Like it was definitely important to flatten that turkey out to get it a nice consistent height because it was all over the shop at first. But now we've got this perfect opportunity to line it up in like just a little border of the stuffing around it. And just like that, I mean, I think bashing it just to get it level was important, but then we could place it on there, leaving a border so we've got it exactly where we want it. I am now 2% more confident this is going to work. Now, what was the next layer? <gasps> Sprouts, but with cranberry. Getting our cranberry sauce. I have never done this before. <laughs> My aim is that it's gonna shred the sprouts and blend the sauce through for a nice sort of sweet, sprouty spread. <laughs> Little shreds of different sizes with the cranberry sauce gently interlaced in the sprouts. And again, you can just tap it down a little bit to cover those areas. Oh my gosh. This level is now ready for our pigs and blankets. And yep, we just wrap the sausages in bacon, homemade pigs and blankets. I think I'm only gonna need two. Yes. Oh my gosh. Stuffing, turkey, cranberry with sprouts, pigs and blankets. Okay, I'm not doing potatoes, pasta, we're not going full out, okay? Have them as an accompaniment. But hopefully we're now in the position where we can start to gather this up. I'm gonna hold the sausages in place. Oh my gosh. Get that first roll, and this is here. Why you got the cling film there? Really, really grip it together like that. I love how I'm saying this as if I've done it before. And there might be some that pushes out the side, but oh wow. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes! Just make sure you keep that cling film on there, but you don't ravel it inside there, okay? And what I am gonna do is encourage the stuffing to kind of close it a little bit. And just for now, I am gonna cover it because that thing is going in the fridge to firm up. Give me a chance to breathe and think about the pastry and tidy up. We are doing way better than I thought. Last video I did, we made some homemade pano chocolates and I did the puff pastry from scratch, which was amazing. So check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, we used all of it and they're all in the freezer. Our breakfasts at the moment are amazing. <laughs> so I've just got a sheet of ready-made puff pastry. This is a slightly more expensive one. This is all butter in it. And after making it myself, if it's all butter, it's hopefully gonna be all good. But I've got a sheet that's actually already rolled out to the thickness of about a pound coin. So what I'm doing is carefully, okay. <laughs> that is on there. And to be honest, as, um, as confident as I appeared then, that has actually ended up a lot better than I thought. So I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of the excess for the moment. Yeah, I'm doing it with two pieces. I just didn't feel confident draping it all in one motion, but I'm giving it a little egg wash around the side to grip. The next piece. Oh, oh, oh. Like make sure there's no air bubbles in this bit, okay? Just start to cut away the excess again. And then just sort of folding it over itself and pinching it. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like a big shoe. I am really tempted to uh, put like a snowman or some holly on the top of it. But instead I'm just gonna lightly score it, okay? <laughs> oh no, come on. No, no. It's on the baking parchment to make it easy to transfer it into the fridge where it is now going for a minimum of an hour just to firm it up. 
before we find out if this was all worth it. It's nearly been an hour of chilling, the oven is on. This is the first time in a long time that I've actually been like quite genuinely scared about the outcome of a recipe. There are so many ways this could go. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's no one else here other than two pugs and a couple cut out of Homer for confidence. So it's like, come on, oven nice and hot, it will bake a long time. So, hey, if it's just some sort of mingly Christmassy post of flavor, that will do. All right, so this is just egg yolk this time. Hopefully slight, oh, look at the difference there. We talked about on the pan of chocolate how if you add like a little bit of milk, you can make it slightly lighter golden. But I forgot to mention, if you want it golden, just the yolk, baby. Here we go, we've done all we can. So we will see this in an hour, or possibly less if it fails. <laughs> So yeah, in an hour's time, hopefully we'll be able to slice a nice wedge out of that golden pastry, dunk it in some gravy, and gobble on a Christmas Wellington. Come on! It is golden and puffed up. It's about five minutes left to go. It smells incredible. Came back into the kitchen, it's the smell of like a Christmas roast dinner. Oh, even England has brightened up. Everything's going right. Oh my gosh, oh, look at that! Oh, the smell is outrageous. I love the like ripples on it. It looks like giraffe bread. Hey, I'm really proud of that, guys. Are you proud of me, Ames? You look like you are. Okay, I've just taken it off its paper. Actually, the bottom was kind of dry as well. Sometimes you can get a soggy bottom. I still might. Let's just remind ourselves that we were going for that, okay? <laughs> so, oh, let's just break through. See, oh, I see the heat coming out. Oh, 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 oh yes, mm. yes, oh my gosh, what the heck has happened there? That's amazing. Oh my, yes, come on, woo, yeah, it looks just like it. I've kind of done like a yin yang sign, haven't I? Oh my gosh! You cannot doubt that that turkey is like a snake. <laughs> it is rolled up. We've got the stuffing going on, we've got the sausage and the bacon. Yeah, baby! I just love it. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is my vision for eating it though. I'm just gonna cut it down the middle. So I'm just trying to get a bit with everything on the pastry, the sprouts, the stuffing. The pigs in blankets, the turkey. Oh, I forgot to say the bacon. I can smell it now. It was smoked as well. Whoops. Oh, I nearly got emotional. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. That is so good. It just tastes like a Christmas dinner with added pastry and a little bit less veg. That's fine. Oh my gosh, all these flavors. The sage from the stuffing is super strong. The comfort in blanket of the turkey. The sweetness of the cranberry, the quiltiness of the sprouts. Are they quilty? Yes, they are quilty. The smokiness of the bacon, as I say, the stodginess of the sausage, the pastry shield. Oh, all coming together. I, I am so relieved, happy that an idea, flux capacitor styly, has come to life. Yeah, it is fun. And it's like something you could make with some Christmas leftovers. Stonking. And the good news for the dogs is I had a little bit of bacon left over. I think you like that, right? So there we go. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do attempt this recipe, which I really hope you do now after all of this, like, ah, I've done the hard bit for you, proving that it can work. Now you put your own spin on it and make yours look even better than mine. Tag me on your photos and I'll see you later. Bye. It is so good. I need to hide this. I am genuinely considering making this for Boxing Day, which for those of you that don't know what Boxing Day is, it's the day after Christmas in the UK, it's what we call it, it's where we all put on boxing gloves and fight over the receipts for our presents that we didn't want.